Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to take stock of, you know, we're, we're here to do research and the research really is the product, right? Um, every time we make a big breakthrough, uh, that is something that will lead to a lot of value and utility for people. And of course, the product itself enables us to do more research, right? So I think these two things go hand in hand. It's a delicate balance. You really don't have one without the other. And that's kind of the view that I hold in my head. We want our research to have contact with the world. We want people to be able to experience kind of all this intelligence that we're building. And um, we're very lucky that it's resulted in a very successful product too. Let's talk about some of the lessons that you learned from GPT-4 uh, and how you applied, applied it to GPT-5. So from an outsider's perspective, there doesn't seem to be a, a large amount of new publicly available data that, mm -hmm. that can be applied to a brand new foundation model. Um, is, is that a correct assumption? And if so, how did you solve that data scarcity problem? Right. So I would say it's somewhat accurate, but not fully accurate.